Howdy, Stubble Kane again to show you a little bit more techno old technology. Don't ever expect any new technology from me. I'm stuck in the 50s. I thought I'd go over the parts of the lathe, and I've got three different lathes, so today uh, we'll start with the closing lathe, and if there's any interest, I'll do one also on the Atlas lathe and on a Logan lathe. But uh, it's nice to know the correct name of the parts on a lathe so that when somebody's talking about it you have a handle on it. Uh, here are the parts as I like to tell them. The bed is the main frame of the built of the uh, lathe and it, of course it runs from one end clear down to the other end all the way uh, under the headstock. And on the ways we have around the bed we have ways there this particular one has V-ways, and most lathes have V-ways, and except for the Atlas. And uh, the purpose of the V-ways, of course, is to line up the tail stock with the head stock. And then the carriage rides on that as well. So it's kind of an alignment system. So here we have, of course, the head stock. That's this entire unit here. And the tail stock. And they can be broke, and the carriage. And they can be broken down into their individual parts, but on the tailstock we've got, of course, the quill, the tailstock hand wheel, and we have a center in here. In this case, it's a live center, a ball bearing center. And then on the back, on the closing lathe, we've got the tailstock lock that locks it to the bed, so it will not no longer slide. And this handle is the quill lock prevents the quill from uh, moving or vibrating. Now on the headstock end, on the closing lathe, we have, of course, the spindle is the main part, and that's underneath the chuck here. You can't really see the spindle, but in the case of a, a closing lathe, the spindle is a, a what we call a long taper or a taper key type of spindle. It's not a threaded spindle. This lathe is ball bearing, uh, or I should say it's a uh, roller bearing equipped. So there's a big bearing here and then another one over here. This particular lathe and closings made two styles has the variable of speed, infinitely variable, and uh, that's how we control that. And that can only be uh, turned when the lathe is running, when the motor is on. On the end down here we've got a uh, hand wheel. That just allows you to turn the spindle over without hurting yourself. And on the end of the hand wheel we have the bowl pin. And that would be pulled out when we're going to uh, run it in back gears and it's in the in position now for a direct drive. Under this housing is uh, the V-belt. Here's a sliding gear that can be moved in or out, and that's used in conjunction with when we set the quick change gearbox. This is the quick change gearbox. And there are three controls that allow you to change the uh, uh, number of threads per inch that you're going to cut or the uh, amount of feed. So we have the sliding gear, we have this. Uh, knob that can be turned to A, B, and C, and then the tumbler here that can be moved into different positions. And you look on the chart here to determine uh, where you desire to have it. Here's the, the uh, on and off switch, or forward and reverse. And that's just a long rod that goes clear under the headstock, and the actual switch itself is on the back side here. A drum switch, if you're familiar with that. On this lathe, I also have a phase converter. It's a three phase motor in here, so I'm using it on single phase. That works pretty darn good. Never had a problem with it. Getting back to the front, this is the feed reverse lever. And the feed reverse lever changes the direction of rotation of the lead screw. The lead screw is this long screw that runs from one end to the other and allows you to transmit the power from the headstock to the carriage. 
this uh, knob, which can be turned to the right or to the left, is for back gears. Either you're either in back gears or you're out of back gears. Right now, we're out of back gears, which is a, we call direct drive. This is a, a carriage stop micrometer type, which I like real well, because the carriage can be moved up, and when it strikes this, uh, and you've preset that, uh, that'll take you right to a shoulder or whatever uh, depth you're cutting. So that's a rather useful tool. This lathe is not a bench style. It does have legs on it, and uh, uh, I don't know if there's really a name for them, but it's uh, I like it a lot better than mounting a lathe on a bench, whereas this little atlas lathe is simply mounted on a bench. Okay, the carriage itself is this entire unit that I'm moving back and forth, and it consists of several different parts. One being the the apron is the whole front part here. That's called the apron. And then on the top, we've got the saddle. This part and this part. And of course, the same thing on the other side is the saddle. And that rides on the ways or rides on the bed of the lathe. Then we have the cross slide. This is a cross slide that can be moved in and out with, with this uh, handle here. And that gives us our cross feed. And on top of that sets the compound rest that can be set at different angles. There's a protractor here. And of course the tool post sets on top of that. Different types of tool posts. I got the regular old style lantern tool post on there right now, which consists of uh, the post itself and the ring and the wedge allows you to change the height of your tool holder when you put it on there. And there, of course, is your tool post wrench. I always keep it there so I know where it's at. So it's always either there or down here on the carriage lock. Now, when you tighten that bolt, that square-headed bolt, that locks the carriage in position. So it can't be moved back and forth. This is the threading dial, which is shown in one of my other videos. And then on the front, we've got the carriage hand wheel. Here's the threading lever which is sometimes called the half nut lever and sometimes called the split nut lever but it's used only for threading. This knob is for the power feeds and when it's put into the uh, upper position that's for longitudinal feed back and forth from left to right. If it's put in the down position and we got to push it like that and down that is power to the cross feed right here. One other thing that this lathe has that not all lathes have, but usually upper end lathes, they have a, uh, a clutch. So this lever here allows you to turn the spindle on and off without turning the motor off. That's a handy feature. And it's uh, not only is it a carriage uh, uh, or a clutch rather, but it's a brake. So if you want to stop the lathe real fast, push down hard on it and you've got a brake and it'll stop the lathe rather quickly. I think that takes care of uh, all the parts for this lathe. I might have missed one or two. Got a set of, of collets up here and I keep some of the other tooling for this lathe here. And uh, down here I have my uh, quick change tooling, which I prefer over the old lantern style. It's a Loris type tool post and uh, that's a very nice feature. We do have a storage cabinet down in the end here also where we keep extra chucks. Okay, I think that concludes this video on the closing 12 inch variable speed lathe. I hope this helps you and uh, if it does, I'll put on uh, some other similar videos for the other mix of lathes that I have. This is Tubal Kane saying thanks for watching and so long for now.